Hey folks, JD here, and today I want to talk about these new, 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 uh, new. These are infrared filters for your Canon camera. So let me grab my Canon camera. I've got my lens already attached. What I've got to find is my other lens. There we go. Let's find that one as well because I'm going to need that in a minute. So. What is the whole point? Well, as you know, I like photography. I've got in the link in the description, you'll find links to my photography online. Not all the places, just one. And uh, essentially, what I've really got into in the past couple of weeks, thanks to Inner Shadows, um, aka Adrian, who uh, sometimes comes out with me on, on, on when, when I do the, the, the RC car shoots, um, is infrared photography. Now I haven't gone down the line yet of uh, of bleaching my my sensor in my camera, but I have gone down the line of getting myself some okayish, pretty tidy, pretty decent uh, infrared filters. Now these were twenty one seventy five, and then and when the time I bought them on Amazon, the link is in the description. Should you want to find out more, and there are four different types of uh, uh, lenses in here. You have uh, IR 720, 760, 850 and 950. So what I've done, as I should have put these in order, let's have a quick look. These are for 52 millimeters, I believe. Yeah, 52 millimeters, 950. Uh, this one should be the next one down. Come on. 720. No, they're not in order. But this is the, 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 the filter that I use for the photos that you're going to see a little bit later on. Now, as you can see, this is an infrared filter. If I hold it up to the light, you can just sort of see a reflection from it, but you can't see anything else. There anyway, you can just kind of make out my hand. Um, now, the whole point of it is, is that you filter the correct amount of infrared light and then it gives you these beautiful, beautiful pictures after a little bit of editing. So as you can see, the standard photos you're going to get using any of these lenses that I have in front of me here look a little bit like this. So that red needs to be changed and you, you need to, there are certain, and this is a bit I'm still learning, so I'm probably not going to get this totally right. I will explain it a little bit later on once I've learned a bit more about it. Mm. But you have got to bring out certain aspects of uh, of the photo itself to change it from that red colour. It doesn't just go from red to that beautiful infrared sort of x-ray sort of look that you get. Once you've altered the, the, the RGB levels, once you've done everything in, in the correct order, then that's what you have. You have that beautiful look. Now, these are just test images. These aren't ones that are going up on sale or anything like that. These are just images just for me to test with to see exactly how everything goes. Now, using these four lenses, you're going to get pretty okay photos, as you can see. Now, only until you then decide if you want to go down the lines of getting your, your sensor fixed so that you can actually then go ahead and you can uh, you can actually film uh, you can actually take photos and they will just come out infrared now i'm thinking about doing that but i'm not going to be doing it i'm probably going to do it to my 4000d in all fairness and not this one but uh the the lenses that, that i've bought here are 52 millimeter so they own they don't fit the prime they only fit my 18 by 55 which is this one here um and they fit quite nicely actually so i was just going to show you how nicely they do actually screw on now if I just go down for, there we are, let's go for the 720. I'm going to hold this away from the microphone as much as I can to stop the bag rustling. And quite literally, you've got a thread one side and you don't the other side, see? So all you do is, with the lens cap off, you just find the biting point and then ever so slowly screw it on. And it's as easy as that. There you go, you've got infrared now. So as soon as you then plug it into your camera, now this is the bit I wanted to show you, and I should have actually done this off camera uh, rather than doing it on camera, but if I just get this sorted, let me just switch my lenses over, da, 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 da. click, and then if I turn this on, there we go, so what you should see, there we go, you can just make out there the red of the, of, of the sky, because I've got the window open, there, so as you can see I've got some 
I've I've sort of been. Oh, actually, that's that's okay. You can see in front of me there. I've got the uh, the infrared of the uh, the the table ornament in front of me there that I'm using. Um, so what I've set, I've set the ice sort of 200. I've set a couple of different things. I, I'm, I'm in the process of trying to find out what's best. So far, I found found out that your ISO setting between 200 and 400 is most definitely the best that you can actually use uh, to get those, those those infrared photos. Now, what I've actually found with that as well is if you stick around five uh, five between five and six then you can actually get a pretty nice sort of coloration from it when you edit it but it is taking a, this is a longer process than normal for me and I, it is taking quite a while for me to actually find um the best sort of setting now you can just go online and see what they say online but to be perfectly honest with you i like to tinker i like to find out for myself uh so that's exactly what i'm doing so i do have another lens here as well which i'm going to go into in a separate video this is another one um and we're going to see whether how how good the infrared on that looks. But so far, my eighteen by fifty five, the uh, the infrared actually looks really really nice, as you can see from the photos at the beginning of this video and sort of quarter of the way through. Ah, uh, why not? And now. And, you know, that's with a bit of editing. We've got more to come. Adrian is sort of guiding me through the process. He's helping out quite a lot. So thank you so much for that in the shadows. I really appreciate that. Uh, and your time and sort of effort to go into that uh, with me. That, that, that really is appreciated. Uh, so we're, we're kind of on our way to sort of getting some nice things. I've got uh, all my lenses. I'm going away for a couple of days um, here to do a couple of photo shoots in the next couple of weeks. So I'm going to be taking all my lenses with me, including the infrareds, and seeing what we can get from a landscape point of view one thing i have noticed with these infrareds it's better if you have a really sunny day get a bash as much light as you can in through the infrared and you will find that you should be fine now testing to see not all lenses not all cameras will work with infrared what you've got to do is you have to have an infrared device something like a tv remote control that you can twist with the uh, with the infrared receiver looking at your camera and then push a couple of buttons and see if on the camera lens if it actually picks up that little flashing LED the little flashing diode um, on the on the infrared sensor if it picks it up then your lens does not uh, then your lens does work with infrared uh, but then again obviously you've got to go through the settings find out what settings are the best etc etc and it's quite a long process it you have to take infrared uh, uh, photography off a tripod because of your exposure settings you want to have a nice long exposure to get as much light as you possibly can in through there so your exposure times I timed on this particular camera with this lens with this infrared lens as well so the 720 on the 18 by 55 on the EOS M and um, with all the settings I had I had a 42 minute exposure time which was to say a bit excessive you know it, it is but at the same time it worked and it got me the photos that you saw uh, a little while ago so I'm quite happy with with this current setup with this current rig now obviously i've got my d4 my 4000d here as well which i'm going to be uh sort of making into an infrared camera all of its own uh so that's going to be coming up in the next couple of months and seeing how that goes this isn't a 52 mil camera uh lens by the way uh this is a little i think it's a 50 is it 56 I believe it's 56 i can't remember i'm gonna go with 56 it's certainly not 52 put it that way there's your 52 cap so i think it's yeah 54 or 56 um so I'm going to be making this probably into an infrared camera on its own, but that's, you know, to come. Uh, so there we go. Well, I just thought I'd give you a rundown on these infrared lenses. I found them to be pretty good so far, as you can see from the photos. When I've done something with a bit more merit, then uh, I will, I'll, I'll, I'll make another video and put it up there just so you can see exactly what's going on with that as well. All right, my friends, thank you ever so much for watching and listening. I've been JD. You've been fantastic as always. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Hello and welcome to all the new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the channel. So until next time, my friends, happy photo photography, photo taking, happy, just happy cameraing. There we go. Why not?